Hello, hello. Welcome to our meeting class on this Halloween day, night, time. All right, let me pull up the UI. Oh, perfect. You see me putting my bow up right away. Say hi if you're here. And oh, you know what? I did not need the sound on that. So, oops, what did I just do? Uh oh, hang on, hang on. Rachel doesn't know how to use her computer. <laughs> so, welcome everyone while I get this figured out. Um, oh, I'm so excited to be here. I didn't even, I don't think we even realized it was Halloween when we um, started planning this. Um, all right, let's see. There's me. I see me. Where, does, where are the comments? Here we go. Thank you. Hi, Kathy. Hi, Deanne. This lipstick is two lipsticks. But I was like, I need new lipstick. I could wear a fun one this week. So I got a fun one this week. So today, if um, anyone, hi, Michelle. Uh, doesn't remember, today we're working with the um, tiny beads, the itty bitty beads, and we're going to make some like half hoop earrings. I've been lovingly calling them the um, Wasconsin earrings because I think that they look like a little bit like light fixtures, which I love. I love like antique houses and like old lights. I love Tiffany lamps. Um, so I think they're really fun. I should be wearing them. I'll put them on after we start perhaps. Um, so if you don't have your stuff ready, you're gonna need some itty bitty beads and you're gonna need some um, dangle beads if you want them and two optional head pins or ball head pins and some 18 gauge wire and some 26 or 28 gauge wire and some ear wires. And all of the, um, and two drum strings. The supplies list is going to be on all of the event pages that we did. I apologize if the music outside gets loud. They have started their Halloween fiesta early, as in like four hours ago. So that's fun. What's everyone been up to today? What is everyone doing? Hi, Shara. Why is this showing up in a weird order? Just Sam posts them everywhere, and then he would be right with us. So, hey Cheryl, anyone do anything Halloween like? Anybody eat candy today? I ate some popcorn, so that's almost Halloween like. Hey Lori, this is um, my first Halloween like in well not in New York because I was in college but like in an apartment and I'm like do people just buzz your apartment is that how Halloween works I'm not really sure um, in case you don't know this is my um wizard outfit eighth grade <laughs> saves my colonial life what happened to my onesie uh I was told that the onesie was not acceptable and <laughs> but my cats in the costume Marauder, he's mad at me. Martin, come here. Come here. You mad at me about the shirt? Only one cat has a costume because the other one got too fat for his costume. Oliver. Can you say hi? Hi, Rachel. Hey, Sam. <laughs> Ooh, chocolate ice cream. Hi everyone, how's everyone doing? Happy Halloween, I love Halloween. Let's see, am my audio through? Okay, we're good. Um, I'm gonna go catch up on comments. Is, oh, um, is everyone beating along with us today? I, I changed all the ones, yeah, I was told it wasn't a very good costume. <laughs> And Kathy, yes, this is a Harry Potter. Uh, I have a Harry Potter cloak behind me, but it was just, it was too much. It was 
like too much fabric to be sitting at my bead table. <laughs> I was like, oh, I won't put the sleeves on. And then it was still way too much fabric. I would love to see your your cloak at some point. I am a- It's literally right behind me. It's like a legit, like (gasps) I was gonna put the hood up and everything, but it just, it was, (laughs) it was too much fabric. It's like full length. It weighs like five pounds. I've got my, my wand right here. You are amazing. I, you know, I told you that I've been I've listening to the books, Universal right? I've given Studios a lot of money. Um, <laughs> no, you didn't tell me you've been listening. Maybe you did tell me you've been listening to the book. I'm on, I'm on like the last 10 chapters of book seven right now. Mm. It's amazing. <laughs> I found this guy named Sidecar Sam. He has a YouTube channel called Sidecar Stories and he reads out every character in their own voice. And it's so fun. Interesting. No, Shire, I'm a, I'm a Gryffindor all the way. I've done all the quizzes. It's always Gryffindor. <laughs> I'm not a Ravenclaw at all. Michelle's noticed that I things have gotten a little dirty lately. The, the, the spiders have moved in. Actually, I didn't put any spiders up in the back, but there we go. Makes all the difference. Welcome, everyone. All righty. Hello, hello. If you're just joining us, um, leave a comment. Let us know you're here. Happy Halloween, Cynthia and Kathy, Amelia, Miranda, Shira, welcome. Yes, Kathy says I'm all decked out and I love Halloween. Um, do you want me to announce last week's giveaway winner? Yes, please. Okay, so the winner of the Art Deco, they were the lapis, right? I'm pretty mm-hmm. sure. Um, beads from last week is Lori Schwartz. So congratulations. Oh, oh my goodness. Congrats, Lori. And uh, what is the giveaway for this week, Sam? This week is you get to pick out a tiny itty bitty strand, the little two millimeter gemstone strands of your choice. The gemstones we are working with today, any of the strands of your choice. That's fun. So all you have to do to enter the giveaway, (laughs) I know, aren't they great? They're so fun. Um, All you have to do to enter the giveaway is is leave a comment on this live stream. Um, And if you like have any beating friends, like come, like tag them or send them the link or we have future classes posted on the website um which i'll put a link to right now see how quickly i can do this um rachel has gotten upcoming classes posted so you have time to gather your materials um some really fun products coming up we'll have more posted soon so like Invite a friend and come to a, a beading class with them. We love meeting new bead friends. So fun. We love new bead friends. <laughs> I'm trying to like, I'm hoping that my light is better today. I don't know. Y'all know my light struggle. I meant to order a new light and then I forgot <laughs> until today. And I was like, oh, one day shipping doesn't work same day. Right. <laughs> I was going to see if I could get like one of those clip on lights for your phone and see if it helps, but I'm not sure if it's only for selfies or if it'll help for videos. You can see, I can see your overhead well today. Do you want to get, should we get going? Yeah. Okay. Yay. So here's, do you like my little, my little setup? I love your setup. Oh, you can't see my wand right now. There's my wand. <laughs> no. And my my candy corn and my little skull. Okay. Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. All right. And my jump rigs and everything just gonna go flying as soon as I start hammering. So we're gonna start. Um, we're working on these hoops today. Ooh, the lighting is good today. I I put um I put a mirror right here. And it's a different mirror. It's a different mirror. And I have like a light bouncing off of it. Although this is not focusing now. I don't know why, but. Oh, those are so but... gorgeous. Those. I've got your overhead pinned right now, Rachel. I know. I was, there was some, it said some sort of message on there, but I don't know what it says. So 
All right, cool. So we're going to start out with the um, 18 gauge wire and we're going to be making the um, the hoop part. So I'm going to get, um, I'll just put this, I don't know what I just did. There we go. Is this the new design um, that you just came up with recently? Kind of. I, I had these like I feel like one time we were talking and I was making, um, for some reason I made like these arches or maybe I was just doing that on my own and I had like the arches like sitting on my bead table and I was like looking at the tiny beads and I looked at them and I'm like, yes, yes, we will make an earring out of that. Yeah, so, the tiny bead, I love how you, in the write-up you talk about how the tiny beads are kind of what are completing the hoop. I think the design and just yeah. like it's very cohesive design that way. I like I really I I didn't want to wrap them around it because we've already kind of done that. But I also think that it's really fun thinking of new hoop designs. It's not just like a straight up and down design. Right. So I'm gonna start out with the 18 gauge. Let me see. Here's my ruler. I'm gonna cut um about three two three inch pieces. You can do a little shorter or longer if you want. We can't currently see what we're doing, but I'm assuming you're just there. We I know there I'm we just go. cutting cool. it. <laughs> cool. I'm, my ruler, like I can't fit it all. I haven't zoomed in. But I'm no, literally just right. cutting. Oh, mm -mm -mm. oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely sent that flying across the room. Um, oh, good. We're good. We're all good. We are all good. So I'm just gonna, I like to start with flat ends. So I'm just kind of doing that um, using my flush cutters. And then we're gonna shape them. I don't know why I put the bench block in here already. There's like other steps. Okay, my little, I always keep like a little thing when I'm working with my silver, actually copper too. I keep like one of the little triangle bead trays. I love these, except for when I spill them. Um, and I just put like my little wire scraps in there. Um, okay, so I've got those and then you'll either need a medicine bottle or something else round. I'm actually going to use my um, liquid bandage bottle because I like this bottle. I'm nice. just going to bend, bend it over. Would you take the bottles like an inch and a half diameter? I can definitely check that. It's about an inch. Okay. So it's like pretty generic. And then in the middle of the hoop, I'm just gonna kind of fold it a little bit and then stretch it back out. Julie's asking how long you cut the wire. Three inches. Cool. But it's totally up to you how long you wanna cut it. That'll work good for like an inch diameter bottle. I think this is kind of like standard medicine bottle size, but for some reason, the only medicine bottle I could find was like very small. <laughs> so I like this bottle. Yeah, I like that these earrings, at least they do have some size to them. Like they- But it's they, not like I, a lot of weight. Yeah, I mean, they just, I mean, I like earrings that aren't too tiny. So at least, uh, yeah, I would just- yeah. When you wear mm -hmm. them? 100%. <laughs> I'm always, I can't believe I still have never pursed my ears. How do I not have a gemstone in my ear by now? Like, come on, Sam. You can get um those, like, they'll do those piercings where they, like, glue them into your skin. You could do that. Excuse me? I don't know what's gluing anything <laughs> into my skin. <laughs> but yeah. I would love, I would love a little, like, peridot or something. I don't know. See, I should actually know what my, my birthstone is, but I just, something colorful, probably a blue stone. I like blue stones. It's all I want is a, is a stud. So Julie says I should do it. So I already have one supporter. I also have always wanted to dye my hair platinum or silver. So these are things I have never done uh, for good reason. <laughs> your, your hair is pretty curly. If you platinum it, you're going to look like Justin Timberlake a la 2000. Oh, with the noodle hair. That was not a good look. No. Okay, so, hey, Amy. <laughs> oh, yeah. Holly doesn't like the derm rolls either. Um, okay, so we're going to start hammering this. I'm going to go for um, kind of like a flat. I'm not flattening it all the way. You still want it to have some 
uh, a little bit of thickness to it. But when I get to the end, I'm gonna flatten it a lot more so I have enough room to punch a hole. So if you don't have a hole punch, you can also um, just like wrap some wire around here and make a loop because it's wider, it should hold. Um, you can also use like a hammer and a nail or um, if you like get a file or something and tap it down, it should also work. Or you can use a drill, um, like a Dremel. They make very small drill bits for that too. Right, and the hole punch or, using or you could well, also, they're not this expensive. Is like, no, they're so cheap. I, got, I think mine is Beadsmith and it was like 10 or 15 bucks. Um, You're telling me to stock that. I still, I've, I still like that idea because I want to stock a few tools. Ever. Yeah, I love them. I have two of them. I have a bigger one and a smaller one, and I also use the small ones to punch holes in my <laughs> my earring cards to hang earrings on. Oh um, but uh, this is only 18 gauge, also. So if you didn't want to punch holes, you could um, twirl up the ends before you start hammering. Like you know, just make a little loop. Oh, and that would that's also smart. That will work really well. I just thought of that and I was like, oh, I should have thought of that earlier. Um, so I'm just going to hammer. Let me know if it's too loud enough and I guess you can mute me. It's all good. Okay. So for the body, I'm just kind of going for flat, but, but still, but not like completely flat. I'd say it's going like probably half thickness. For those just joining, Rachel's using 18 gauge wire. She's using sterling here. You can also use solid copper, but you definitely want to use a solid metal um, so that it, yeah, you when you hammer use, it, like, you don't expose any other colors. Yeah. If you use like a like a colored <laughs> wire or a, what are those wires that, that like the anti-tarnish wires, like this, those have coatings on them. So when you hammer it, they're not, it's not all gonna be the same color anymore necessarily. So definitely stick with sterling or copper. Copper is super cheap. Um, or brass. Brass would be good. Um, Holly says she uses stainless steel. Um, I've never hammered stainless steel. I don't know how that would go. Because you were saying you you made ear wires out of stainless steel, but it was more brittle, more much more of a work hardened metal to work with. Yeah, so they're they're harder. Um, they hold their shape a little better, I think, um, without a bunch of hammering. But I don't know how hard it would be to kind of like flatten it because um, mm. I've never really tried. I only I don't have stainless in very big gauge. I have like twenty gauge and I think twenty four. Um, Welcome, Susan. We're using eighteen gauge wire here for the main part of the frame, and then Rachel's going to use a smaller gauge when she strings on beads to the to the yeah. um, the hoop, the half hoop. So I'll just go ahead and like generally flatten both of these. So I'm, I have a question for everyone while Rachel's hammering away. Are you in, are you already working on your holiday creation, whether that be your gifts or what you're selling? Um, are those already done? Are you just getting going on that sort of thing? Sam, do you want to um, uh, gallery view? Sure. Just so that, because I'm going to be hammering for a minute. <laughs> um, so you... I do want to say one thing is that once, so I, I've kind of flattened these and now I'm going to go into the ends and I'm going to um, hammer them like really thin so I can punch the hole in them. Thin and wide. And so I'm going to switch from uh, this is just a, a ball peen hammer. I think I probably got this at like a, a craft store. I don't know what brand it is. I've had it forever. Actually, I think I got it at a local bead shop like 15 years ago. But um, so I was using the flat side for uh, just flattening. And now I'm going to go in with this. Um, it helps me get a, um, what, what am I looking for? It helps push the metal out a little bit more and it also is going to make it um so that i find it makes my edges a little bit smoother i don't really have to do a lot of sanding i think so I've, only used, I've, I've only used the ball peen end uh when i was doing texturing sheets of metal mm -hmm. to get the to get a hammer texture 
So it's so interesting that you use it to do X, to do the flattening on the edges of this also. I, yeah, I like to do the least amount of like sanding that I can. And even though this isn't going to be touching the skin, I still don't really want it to be sharp. Of course. Um, and also for those curious, you're using a steel bench block, right? With the, yeah. with the ball peen hammer. Yeah, I also have like a, a dampener, a sound dampener under it. I think that's what it's called. I don't know. It's like literally just a big piece of rubber. Smart. Um, um, also to answer in reply to my the question I just posed uh, about holiday creations, Rachel and I have been thinking of classes for this month uh, that are geared towards gift giving and so like things that are maybe a bit more, less costly to make or things you can make more of more easily. Month. What do you say? I said more for next month, I think, because we already have this month planned. That's true. Well, we do have a very special, so we're doing a stringing class, I'm doing a string class with Lynn at the, in. Oh yeah, I don't know what that project is. So yeah, we're going to post that soon. And then <laughs> the last project of the month is I'm getting these ornament frames in that are snowflakes. So it's just basically like this, I mean, um, with like five or six points and you just bead on to each of the wire, you bead onto the wire and then fold up, fold the edge or make a loop of the edge. And then you have a ornament. So those are arriving soon so that we can have like a whole ornament making party at the end of the month. I'm very excited. Gonna make I my Hanukkah ornaments. <laughs> My boyfriend is like, you're one of those people that leaves your your decorations up until uh, like forever. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. I want to leave like them up for six months. And he's like, no, January 1st, they're gone. <laughs> but I will I would like to see, he's going to be putting them all away if they're gone January 1st, because I'm not putting them away on January 1st. <laughs> oh my goodness. So <laughs> you just file, them away you, you just used to file. Oh uh, yeah, I was just kind of smoothing it out a little bit. You don't have to, but for the sake of time, I was just. Just do you want to show us really bit. quick what? Yeah. That was. Yes. Let me get the baby file. I like the baby files better. They have like I don't know what they're called. They might be called diamond files, and they don't. They're not like normal. Um, feel like a normal file has a, oh, this one's very worn out. Um, you can't even see that, but when you go in one direction, it files. And if you go in the other direction, it doesn't. So if you, if you file oh. up, it, it does. But what I like about these tiny ones is that I can just go like do whichever way I want. And it, it files are kind of like sandpaper, but they're, they're more for like finer. They work great for this. They were not expensive at all either. Um, the bigger files are expensive but really? I like this because um for like small things like this it's great um and it's nice that just you're like rounding it out a bit making it a little, little less sharp it just it's yeah it just it's, it's good, not necessary it's good design but oh I didn't punch the hole so I'm gonna punch a hole on this side too and then I'm gonna go onto the other earring I'm always worried when I punch the holes that I'm gonna like you got to make sure you're lining it up well or that you have enough room because you can like get too close to the edge. And then after I punch the hole, I, I hammer a little bit more just to smooth it out. Because sometimes you get like a little bit of a, a lip. Um, I see now, that Lori. So welcome, Sharon, first of all. I'm so glad. That, welcome to your first stream. Um, and Lori Schwartz just arrived. So you might not have been here, Lori, when we announced the giveaway winner. Uh, you won the Lapis Art Deco set of beads. Um, and Lori said, so congratulations. She says, I made, I made a necklace out of silk cord with a Christmas charm on it for my neighbors when COVID first started. Good therapy. Yeah, I mean, so many in the group have told me like beading has just been, has been like so important during quarantine. Just have it's something funny. creative out yeah. to do. 
I'm I'm like primarily a beater and at the beginning of quarantine for some reason I was like I'm gonna make everyone I know a watercolor bookmark and let me tell you I don't watercolor <laughs> now I do <laughs> wow I like got it into my head everyone's getting a watercolor bookmark. <laughs> I want a watercolor bookmark <laughs> I'll put it on my list. <laughs> Yay. That's all I need for Christmas. Kathy says she's making snowflakes and icicles, looking for great easy ideas for necklaces. Um, one, so I have some ideas for one of the gift classes is around, I'm getting, a, I just got a ton of cultured sea glass in, which is man-made sea glass from recycled glass. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, it's what I used to, I used to work with a ton of sea glass back when I spent many more hours beading. Um, so I'm going to bring back some of my old designs and some of them are like very simple, like a flat sea glass pendant. And then basically just either using a triangle bail or just using wire and you could just, and basically laying a charm on top of it and putting on a chain. It's like such a lovely gift to give. And then it's, it's very cost effective of a give also of a gift. I was telling Rachel that I do the most beading around the holiday time because it's like the most affordable way to, to give gifts that people will actually like really enjoy and use. I've been, I, I I'm known, to... what do you say? No, you go. I'm now known, my, my friends and family now come to expect that they'll get like an earring or a necklace and a scarf from me. I'm very consistent. They, <laughs> they, they love it because they... Earring? <laughs> 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 they gotta wait till next year to get the other one. Like... My friend Simone always jokes, he's like, you always give me a scarf every year. I'm like, well, do you still have the one from last year? I'm like, no, I lost it. I'm like, exactly. New scarf. <laughs> I think you're a lot more, um, a lot less expecting like with gifts. Cause I remember um, I gave a family member like a jewelry set I made uh, when I was younger and it was so cute. I remember it and for um, Christmas and like she never wore it. And just, if you're sensitive like I am, <laughs> just know who's gonna wear it and who's not because that was upsetting. <laughs> And well, I it's still also, remember it's that tricky. she didn't wear it, so. Well, that's too bad. I mean, it's all, it's tricky because, I mean, there's so many, there's so many styles of jewelry that's like, it's hard to exactly nail down what someone yeah. would like, but keeping it simple is, I think, always a good bet if someone, in case someone doesn't wear a lot of larger ear pieces. Yes. Yeah. Um, so, oh, we have a few people here. Hi, Helen. Hi, Marla. Um, let's uh Lori I started with the flat end when I went around the arch part but I like to use the ball end on the end um to push the metal out and make it flatter and it's kind of rounder I don't know that's kind of the way I always have done it um I don't, I don't even know if I've ever really tried to use the flat end on the end um, Helen, this is a hole punch. It is a 1.25 millimeter hole punch from, I'm 99% positive this is from Beadsmith. Yeah, I think so too. Um, either that or it's the Euro punch is on this one. This is my bigger one. I thought I heard like screaming. Um, if you're just joining now, Rachel's teaching this. Um, do you want to show the original design, Rachel, of the sure. these hammer drop earrings? Um, if, if you're just yeah. joining, leave us a comment, say hello. Oh, I'm curious where everyone's joining in from. Marla just gave an idea. Marla's coming in from Delaware. I love seeing the the multitude of places. Because we have, I think, you Helen, you are you in? You're not in the states, right? Oh, those are so pretty. So Rachel's teaching this design right now using two millimeter gems. Um, and, and then- Or three, two or three. Um, yeah. And the, um, this is a very quick design too. I'm like, we're like basically halfway done. Um, and this is 18 gauge that I hammered flat uh, around here. And then I hammered it out on the end where I could punch a hole in it. Um, 
And then, um, I totally forgot what I was just saying. Um, then if we're ready, I'm, oh, thank you, Helen. Um, oh. Well, like wow, look at all these places. Everyone's We've got... so nice to me. <laughs> this is great. <laughs> Thank you. Everyone's from everywhere. This is so cool. There's a lot of people on the um different coasts and everything. So I think it's good that we're we're putting um we put two time zones. On the this coast. is true. It's a good reminder for me to always put yeah. to, to put both time zones. I'm I'm just, I usually just put Pacific. I'm like, people will convert, but let's let's just <laughs> I say I'm just they, put East Coast. Like on Nickelodeon also. as a kid, they always put two time zones. Um well, you mean and like of course five, I had Central. no idea what it meant, but I was like, I, I don't know what they're talking about. I'm just gonna TiVo it. Um, <laughs> 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 okay, next part. So for the next part, um Initially, when I first made these, I made it so that this was also three inches once I've got all the beads on there. Um, so I'm going to do that again. Um, or you could just count the number of beads you want and it should pretty much work out. This one, these were the two millimeter jades and I used eight per side. Um, but before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and wire wrap my optional um, crystals. These are not necessary. You could also use briolets. I really wanted, or briolet, sorry. Um, I really wanted to use the tanzanite tiny uh, itty bitty beads I got. Um, and so these Swarovski drops just worked well again. Uh, the gauge of wire I used for the big hoop is 18. And for wrapping these and doing the drop part, um, either 26 or 28 would be great. 26 is Rachel's go-to, I've noticed by yeah, now. Yeah, I, I love 26 days and I was running out, so I used 28 on the, the original pair. Um, but it just kind of it depends on what you like, what you use. 26, I love. I love 26 gauge. I'm going to just... 26 and 20 gauge, I think, are like good. Because <laughs> I, I here I, here I was thinking that 24 is like I always just, I bought 24 when I first started out as the first as just my first wires. Like this is probably the most standard because a lot of tutorials do ask for 24, but now you're starting to show me the ways of 26 and 28. But it's it's interesting that you say that because a lot of the tiny beads that you have um these 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 itty bitty beads actually have good size holes but a lot of tiny beads like the ones on the like mixed strands a lot of them won't fit 24 gauge or um, interesting actually i might be wrong i might have been trying to do 22 gauge but i know might... i tried i tried to put 24 in some of the indian cut little beads and they don't fit um, they yeah. often will not fit and i also i like to have i don't like to have to shove <laughs> the wire through the bead it kind of it, especially um, if you're going to be wrapping like right up close to it, if you kind of have to, if there's not a lot of wiggle room, you're going to put stress on the bead. If the wire even moves a little bit on the inside, you're going to stress the bead. You might break it. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap my um, briolets, my sparkly beads. So what I like to do is this is a little piece of wire. It doesn't. Feel, I usually do it off a big piece, um, but I have like all these little bits from another project. So um, I'm gonna just thread the wire through and then I have a short tail and a long tail and you can even make the tail even shorter. But then I just like to pinch it at the top of the bead and then I'm gonna take whatever pliers you wanna use and get rid of those hammers in the way. And just wrap a little bit with the shorter strand just to get it so it's not going anywhere. Is it like one and a half, two loops you did? I, I did like one and a half. It's just enough to where it kind of like overlaps itself. I'm going to wrap on top of it. There's a way that um, I've seen in like videos where they come up around it and then there's still like a tail sticking through. And I don't like that. I like this. I think it's easier. 
<laughs> I was like, I like it I this way. Like, <laughs> yeah, I do. I like it this way and this is the way I'm doing it. Um, <laughs> uh, it's what it's like knowing me in real life, y'all. Um, Helen so says thank you for I, adding. Oh, can I kind of interrupt you for a second? Yeah, go for it. Um, Helen says thank you for adding the videos to YouTube. Um, so glad you said that, Helen, because I worked really hard to post all of those. Um, for those that are interested, you can watch. Rachel and I have done nine of these classes already. So this is our, this, wait, yeah, this is our 10th class. Is it really? Totally. So I'm going to try to pull up my YouTube channel. some of my projects. <laughs> oh, me too. I know but... you haven't finished most of them, but well, I'd like to go back <laughs> we persist forward. I, um, I've been running out of silver wire and I like to do most of my stuff in silver and I finally ordered more I ordered more um the other day and now I have like a, I have a zillion dollars worth of wire coming and a bank account that's crying um <laughs> oh my goodness <laughs> yeah that and sterling you, you buy is not cheap no it's not it's expensive right now it's uh 10 feet of 10 gauge sterling silver wire I did not buy this because I I wanted to to just kind of like check it out and i was gonna just get like 10 feet of it and it was 150 dollars, and i was like delete <laughs> oh my god wait for the 18 gauge for or which gauge, gauge is that okay so it's thick gauge. okay but, but my like gosh 10 feet of like the 18 gauge um i think it was like 20 or something it was not i mean silver is definitely not cheap um so so i just posted I think I posted the right link. I'm very new to YouTube. Um, I just pinned, I also pinned it to figure out technology day by day. Um, you can now subscribe to Sam's Beach Shop on YouTube. It would mean so much to me if you hit that subscribe button now that Rachel and I are going all in on these classes because everyone, we see we've gotten such lovely feedback from it. I I'm very happy they're on YouTube and and don't hate me, but I hate the way I did the the wrapping on the other Swarovski ones, the 26 gauge. And then I was gonna use 28 for everything on this, but I don't like this as much as I like the 26 gauge. Did you just finish the that. first one and delete? Oh no. <laughs> yes, I deleted it exactly. I real life deleted it. Um here's my 26 gauge. <sighs> Oh, well, now I can't find it. So I guess we're going to have to real life undelete it and just do it again. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll just leave more wire this time. I'll work off the roll because that was part of my problem is usually I have like a big roll of wire so I can wrap it as much as I want. Um, oh, I so should show you a new way, a new way that I like Go ahead. to wrap the briolets since we're here. How's that? What were you gonna ask me? Oh, I was I was curious what everyone's doing for Halloween. Cause I think I need to finally watch Rocky Horror. Oh, I think you don't. Because <laughs> it's uh, how can I? It's just one of those things that just comes up every year. How can I? I think it's I need I just need to know what it is. I don't like it. Um, <laughs> my sister and I were like, oh, this is like a big thing because I was in musical theater in high school. Um. And we were like, oh, everyone's like obsessed with this. Let's watch it. And we watched it and we were like, no. <laughs> Rachel, those hot Rocky Horror fans are going to come for you now. <laughs> they can come for me. That's fine. Um, it's not my jam at all. It was weird. Um, okay. So another way I like to sometimes wrap the brulees is I like to do, um, I like to twist the wire. So I have a little bit of a longer bit here. This is some wire that I definitely left too long in the liver sulfur and it's like flaking off on me. Um, and then I'll take my pliers right at the edge of the brelay and bend it over. And then I'm gonna wrap it around. This gives it a little bit more um, volume, especially if you cannot um, fit a thicker gauge through your feed. And I need it. I was like one more twist to keep this from moving on me. Okay. And then we just go around like this. And I'm doing it with two strands. So it's 
kind of That's like pretty. extra. And then you can cut it here if you want. A lot of people like to come back over, like bring the strand up and just do a twist at the top just so that they know it's secure. This is like flaking really bad. I think I'm gonna be keeping this pair. <laughs> I, I, was, so I try to use my liver sulfur multiple times if I can. And the day that I did this, um, I left it in there for like hours. I totally forgot about it. And that is why this is happening to me. Oh my goodness. Angela's asking you about um, if you oxidize the wire. Do you want to tell us about your process for doing that one, once more? Yes. Okay. So I 100% use the liver sulfur before um, wire wrapping. Um, you can get it. And I usually like to buy um, the gel. And then it works best if you put it in hot water. Um, so you like dissolve it in hot water. I like to save, um, like if, if anybody gives you like a sugar scrub for Christmas or something and you have like a jar, jars are great. You could use like a medicine bottle. Um, I like to put the hot water in there and then just kind of like shake it up so that it, um, it dissolves. And then I'll put my wire in there and shake it up a little bit. And if the water is really, really hot, like my tap water gets so hot it'll melt your fingers off. Um, it, <laughs> If the water really Brooklyn hot, pipes. <laughs> I know it only takes a couple of seconds. Um, so, and then you can pull it out and just rinse it off. A lot of people um, will dip it into a uh, neutralizing bath. It's like baking soda and water. And I think that's what they recommend you do. I don't do that. Um, and I have not experienced any issues, but I also like my metal to be like as black as it can get. So. Right. You do have a very distinct style with your sterling jewelry that I love, but so the neutralizing bath will make it a little less dark. Yeah. Um, yeah, I do it with copper a lot too. The reason is because then I can control, um, like once I sell it, like no matter what somebody does with their piece of jewelry, it's going to look the same. And I like that. And then I don't have to worry about like recommending tarnishing cloths and stuff. If you're also just starting out with wire, um, and are interested in having getting that the antique copper look. Um, what I purchased when I first started out was for these rolls, um, and they they're basically they're a non tarnish, they're copper wire, but then they have a coating on them that makes them antiqued and non, and then they won't tarnish further. Are you scratching my carpet? I'm sorry. <laughs> Who are you yelling at? <laughs> my cat. I think he's mad at me. Um, um, so these aren't he perfect for, wants. this wire isn't perfect for projects like this one where you have to hammer it because the moment you hammer it, like you'll just get to the exposed, you'll expose the copper underneath and then it kind of defeats the purpose of the non-tarnish. But I love these for like basically a, a, any normal wrapping project. You can just have already, already um, antiqued copper and this stuff is not expensive. I was actually thinking of stocking some of that Still working on that Beatsmith order, Rachel, that I've been talking forever yeah. about. But um, another thing about oxidizing wire is, yeah, 100% um, oxidize it before you do the project. Um, sometimes when I get wire in, I'll oxidize half of it, and then I'll um, have just the other half be the bare metal. Um, and that way, I always have it on hand. You can go back and oxidize it after if your project's like all glass, but if you're using stones, don't even think about it. Um, right. So once, I, once I'm done wrapping my beads, I'm gonna um, make sure that the loop is, oh, I forget the word, perpendicular to the hole. So like the holes are going this way and my loop is going this way. So that way when it's hanging, you're not like just like looking at the hole. Oh, he's not in a onesie. Well, no, that's not even the cat. I don't know where Marauder went. I think he's oh, he's mad about the onesie, but he's not the one scratching the carpet. Oliver is <laughs> he wants food. Come here. You're a bad boy. Rachel put one of her cats into a a minion costume, right? Yeah. So this is this is Oliver. He's a carpet scratcher. And this is Marauder. Did you oh my him? goodness. <laughs> and he's got a minion costume. Are oh, you mad? Like mad. Okay. <laughs> You're okay. 
okay. Okay, bye. Oh, he's mad. Oh, he's thanks, really for, thanks for subscribing to the YouTube <laughs> channel, Sharon. I su we super appreciate it. It's a brand new channel, so thank you so much. And yes, okay. you can watch all nine of the past videos on there, which is crazy. That's like, we have over nine hours of classes up, up on the channel That's already. That's crazy. Oh my gosh. So um, I'm ready for the next part. I'm going to go ahead and start the end of my wire with, um, this is the 28 gauge wire with just a little double wrapped loop. I usually like to do like three wraps. Just a personal preference. And that's how much space I usually end up leaving. So you can use your pliers to pull the wire too. Um, it gets it tighter, but I always just prefer to use my fingers. And push it down. This is definitely my fair bearings. <laughs> I'm blowing on it because the, the oxidation is flaking off um, because I left it in there way too long and the water wasn't hot and I never have this issue except for when I do that. So we're gonna be aiming for about three inches just because I like that length. I like that it's gonna be about the same length as we did here. Where did the ruler go though? Ruler. These are my most favorite rulers ever. They're better for sewing though. Um, but yeah, you can see it pretty well on here actually. Yeah, totally. I love them. Um, okay. And again, these are the itty bitty tanzanite beads, which I have never, I've never had this stone before. Yeah, me either. I think it's so interesting, like all the stones that you got out of the itty bitties are like a lot of them are ones you don't usually carry. I thought that was very interesting. Yeah, I, I, I the variety that I was able to get was so much better, so much higher than I usually can get. I loved was like tanzanite, malachite, and the little light appetites. It was such a nice. I loved the the color. If you like scrolled on the album in the group, it's so colorful. It with all those tinies in there. It really is. Let's see where I'm at. So I'm going to look for basically once I get to an inch and a half, and then I'm going to count how many beads and then I don't have to measure it again. <laughs> and then for the other one, it'll be easy too. For my two millimeter ones, it was eight. So I'm guessing it's probably going to be seven ish for these, but we'll see. One, two, three. Oh, this is exactly seven. Let's see. I'm, I'm including the, um, the loop and the measurement. Okay. What am I? I'm losing my mind. Maybe I didn't do three inches. Oh, so you're not wrapping these directly on to using a jump ring to attach it to. That's smart. Yeah, I didn't want to make it too far down myself. I'm losing my mind. Point seven point. Oh, maybe I just did an inch and a half for this. Okay, ignore me. I'm going to do three inches this time because that's what I want to do. So we're going to use even more beads. And they're going to be on. a longer one, Give me one second. I'll be right back. Hi, Sam's mom. I miss my mom. What is going on? Okay, I think she figured out that we're in the middle of a stream. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so there's one inch. We're gonna, no one's there. I'm still gonna go with three inches. I'm excited to see, they're gonna be like a long oval then. I don't know why I ended up doing less on the last one. Cause I remember when I was making them, I thought we're gonna do three inches. And then I don't know what happened. But this way, this is fun because now you'll get to see what it looks like with however long this is. This is probably about an inch and a half. Okay, so on the original ones, it's an inch and a half. <laughs> We're gonna see how this looks with three inches. 
and that's perfect because they're for me and I like long earrings, so. So basically these will, drop, these will drop farther down. Yeah. Okay. Well, thanks for subscribing, Kathy. Perfect. Okay, so about an inch and a half with these ones, which I think are about three millimeter beads. The tans in it was like three millimeters, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. they were probably, they're all between two and 2.5. Okay, one more. I think we're only going to watch me thread beads on one of these earrings because this is it. <laughs> I can't really <laughs> see the holes right now. Um. I was right before this. You mean with the millions of lights and stands in your face, you can't see what you're doing? <laughs> 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Okay, I lied. We're going to do 14 beads because I don't like to do 13 of anything because I'm superstitious. Um, <laughs> uh, Lori, beads. Rachel's using Tanzanite here. She's using the itty bitty. You can yes. use the designs based around the itty bitties that um, we have, that I have now in the shop. Um, in all sorts of stones, and this is the this is tanzanite. Yes, and the jade were really pretty with it. It kind of depends on like what fire you're using. Um, I almost used the morganite, but I wanted to use this instead. I think the light mm -hmm. blue with the stir with the oxidized sterling is stunning. It's so pretty for okay. Sorry. Oh no, you saw that right. <laughs> it happens it's a bead table Things I do what do we you. expect well i usually work on a bead mat um so it's not usually that big of a deal but rachel's very nice and uses a paper background so we can see better <laughs> i know that's the one thing about these little triangle tra trays is i always knock them and i have like this flower tray that's way better and it's ceramic but uh, i have the I've same one it. i love it i've had it full of a project for like five months so the same project, not different projects, the same. So, that I'm obviously Book not working Anna. on. Um, Are you someone who has like a million projects going at once? Or do you work yeah. like in a collection at a time before and then? Um, I you're very organized a collection person. at a time, but like, mm -hmm. You know, my boyfriend said to me the other day, you know, for an or a person who says they're organized, you're very unorganized. If I like searched frantically through like to figure out what gauge wire I used for um, a different pair of hoops I made. And because when I when I do pricing, I just like write things on sticky notes and then I write down like everything I used on the sticky note and then I just stick them all together and it's not organized at all. And it's mildly hilarious because I have an iPad Pro, so I don't have little pieces of paper everywhere and I don't use it. <laughs> yeah. You know, this design might also yeah. work with beading wire because I was just looking through different beading wire projects now that I'm I was thinking that, but I don't, legs. you know, I don't really know how to use beading wire. I never learned, so. Until our beading class coming up, that, and I know. that will change very soon. Um, That'll be so interesting. Because it would hang because differently if, you, if you're using beading wire, like, because then you can't ever, like, bend part of the design, essentially, because it would just hang okay. naturally. Yeah, so I got to the end. Um, and this is looking quite long. So this is going to be very interesting. So this is the three inch. The other, the main design, or the ones that I made initially are an inch and a half of the stones with the um, relay in the middle. Mm, what's happened to you? It's quite mesmerizing to watch you wire, wire wrap, Rachel. Oh, I'm glad. <laughs> it's, it's actually very satisfying. I'm finding it very calming. I don't know if anyone Meanwhile, else experiences the same here, thing. Like, I'm just watching like, Rachel make a like perfect a loop. Job. <laughs> it's so nice to watch you make a perfect loop. I'm like, ah, it worked out so well. It's as if I did it, but I didn't have to do it. <laughs> okay. 
So that is that. And then I'm going to take my, I'm going to get all of this stuff out of the way, actually. Um, all of the little beads, because I know as soon as I start doing something, they're going to go flying. But I am going to get my jump rings out of here. Um, you could do this directly on the earring. Oh, I did use smaller ones. Let me get smaller jump rings. Um, you could do this wrapping directly on the earring, but I honestly just didn't want to. Um, I wanted it. A lot of the times when you wrap directly on it, especially when you're using a spin of a gauge wire as this, I find that like if it got caught on something or whatever, it would stretch it. And then I wouldn't like it as much anymore. Which ones do I use? Use those. Yeah, and the, that's not exactly what I meant. So like the wire could get bent into a weird shape on here and it wouldn't, mm -hmm. It just wouldn't hang the right way. So I like to use the jump rings for something because I think it just makes sure that the design will still have its consistency. I like that you're kind of like a bead shop that everything has a per bead price. Just like when you're walking around a, a, a little bead shop and everything is like- Did you notice like, that on my, uh, on my jump rings? Of course rings. I did. It's, it's, I, it's, it's so great. You, it makes it easier for um, pricing. I really want to do like the um, the computer program that you can like input all your beads on, but I have so many beads that just seemed like a huge time commitment that I didn't have. It's going to take like hours and hours and hours and hours and hours and maybe one day I'll pay someone to do that for me when I make a lot of money from beading, but right now <laughs> it's not going to happen. <laughs> So I'm just making sure that because we're dealing with thin wire and we've got the ends of these hoops hammered so thin, you just want to make sure you do a really good job closing your jump ring. Yeah, for those, I know we have a mix of expertise levels watching. Do you want to just show for the jump ring just really quick the proper well, way these to itty bitty jump, jump ring? rings? Sure. Oh, heck yeah. <laughs> so can you see the itty bitty jump ring? Um, almost. <laughs> Why is it not focusing? Come on. Oh, there we go. Interesting. There you My go. camera's yeah. doing some weird stuff today. So um, with jump rings this small, the easiest way is to use two pliers. And you just kind of want to twist them in opposite, opposite directions. So it's open like this. You don't want to pull the jump ring apart. That'll ruin it. And yeah, then- so Doing it like this keeps the shape of it. Mm-hmm. And then when you um, go to hook it through the other side, you just close it the exact same way. Um, and you can put a little bit of pressure when you're pushing them in, just to kind of, if you find that when you pull them apart, you've widened a little bit, you can put a little pressure when you're twisting them in, but make sure you still use that twisting motion. Don't like open it. And shut them. This actually good. So then, once I got to this stage, I pulled it so that it had more of a peak at the end. Did I? This is looking like I put too many on one side. <laughs> oh, you think so? <laughs> Eight, yeah, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. I don't know. No, they're the same. Okay, I don't know what it is. Maybe I'm just crazy. So this is what this looks like. I I think it's so fun, this long actually. So this is the three inches compared to the um inch and a half on this one. So it's like a very different look. Lori has just had a well, oh yeah, they're so different. And also and I think Lori's idea kind of combines the two of like putting a, a shorter row from the same hole and you can have multiple strands. Oh, that would be fun. To yeah, a chevron design. Using like a jump ring. Um, that would be really cool. Um, the way that I shaped the arch, I took the, um, before I hammered the uh, 18 gauge wire, which was a three inch piece of wire, I uh, wrapped it around this bottle and just kind of like, and then when I took it off, I took my finger and I kind of made, just kind of like pinched it a little bit at the middle just to kind of give it a little bit more of a um a point okay now oh did i just spill them things everywhere nope i did not okay so now i am going to finish it up 
I'm gonna take my 28 gauge wire again and I'm gonna wrap it so that I create a little loop at the top. Now I did try this by putting the, the ear wire directly on here and it like, if you had ear wires with smaller holes, it probably worked great, but it, um, it moved around a lot and it like moved itself down here. So that's why it's good to test out your designs before you start selling them or anything. So I'm gonna take another strand of, I keep finding more of the beads, geez. <laughs> another strand of the 28 gauge wire and I'm gonna hold it and then I'm gonna just wrap it a little bit and make sure the wraps are nice and tight together and then I'm gonna do this you can use a much smaller piece or a much smaller piece than the one I used but I just happen to have this sitting sitting out here so this is one case when I probably would use the pliers to just make sure it's tight. Don't pull too hard. Um, it is possible to snap your wires. So then at this point, I'm gonna wrap it like I did my relay kind of. And I'm gonna take the smaller wire and wrap around. Try and get it as flush as I can. I'm gonna use the pliers too. Angela's asking like little... why I'm not why I'm not making along with you today. Ooh, you didn't think anyone would notice, but they did. <laughs> yeah, I do have I, I do have a couple of reasons. One, I really enjoy I'm first off can't multitask, so I really enjoy watching you um make it and then and asking and facilitating and asking questions. I feel like I can focus way better. Mm -hmm. Um and also I feel like I'm absorbing a lot more of what you're of what of what you're teaching, which I enjoy. Um, also, I think it just keep, makes it a little bit more focused and streamlined. If I'm not constantly stopping, be like, Rachel, I I am lost. What what's mm -hmm. going on? I All right. So I've got my my little wrap, and then one thing I'm gonna note is that when you go to make your loop. you're gonna. By the way, I just want to say that my fingers are not dirty. I got uh, I got makeup stuck under my nail, and I can't get it out. So I just want to say that because it's bothering me and I really did try. Um, well, anyways, oh my gosh, my sister's here, Rachel. My my sister, Rachel's here, Rachel. <laughs> hi. Hi, other Rachel. So I bent it this way because we're going to make the loop um, parallel to the arch so that when we put the ear wire through, it hangs like this and it doesn't hang like sideways. Um, if you ever forget that, though, you can honestly move your loops half the time, it's fine. Okay. Angela said it's not chocolate under your fingernails? It is not. Wait, my Definitely. sister's making the project. Really? Rachel, you're the best sister ever. My sister is the one who got me into jewelry making all those years ago. I didn't fact. know that, you didn't tell me that. No, so my sister and mom, had a business together selling jewelry and clothes. Um, and I was, as a younger brother, I'm three and a half years younger than her, would have like, I want to join along. And so like, I no, would design I'm the still earrings. older than. <laughs> you're slightly, yeah, you're slightly older than my sister. Um, so I would design earrings and then Rachel or my mom would then assemble them together because I didn't know how to do it at the time. Mm -hmm. Um, and then eventually like, God, and so it's, it's from my sister that I actually learned like all about bead making and we used to like go to bead shops together and get tools, check out tools from like our local bead store and make things and. She doesn't live with Sam Lori. Or I would totally say yes. It's up to Rachel if she wants to join the Zoom call, but I'm, I'm oh. gonna guess she wants to chill out in her apartment right now, which is her call. So um, at this point, um, if you're using the ear wires that I teach how to make, and it is on YouTube, yes? Yeah. Um, they have this little extra loop. At, and so I like to hang accent beads there a lot of the time. So now I'm gonna take one of my ball head pins 
and thread another one of these beautiful little candle lights on it. If I can. It is so cold in here. <laughs> it's like uh, we have our AC unit in the window, and you know they like include like plastic to attach it to the window, so it has really no insulation. And yeah, it's definitely cold in here. Yeah, I never bothered to like actually remove my AC during the winter to to stop the cold from coming in from outside. I know that's what you're supposed to do. Yeah, I briefly discussed it with my boyfriend, but we have not done it yet. So we might just buy a heater. The apartment comes with heating, but I have stuff like on top of all of the uh, radiators and I don't want to move it. So I'd rather just buy a heater. I used to move around my apartment in Brooklyn with a $20 space heater from Bed and Bath and I loved it. It's all I needed because my room was so small. I didn't need a big heater. So it was great. It worked perfectly. We have very high ceilings. The um, living room, the, uh, uh, the lights that we have in there are so hot that I could also just leave those on. <laughs> um, okay, so I'm just gonna open up the loop at the top like I did with the gem ring. I'm gonna thread my little accent bead on there. You can also, um, you can accent bead uh, regular your wires too. You can kind of like straighten them out and then like slide a bead on there. It's a little bit more of a pain and you do have to reshape the earrings though. But you can also build the ear wire around them, which at one point maybe we'll teach that. So I'm gonna just open up my ear wire and I'm gonna thread this on here. Which way do I want it to go? I'm gonna just go this way. Those are that is stunning. Rachel, that is stunning. It's so big. I like it. I guess it'll look better if I lay it down and you can see it without my hand in the way. But so yeah, you can play around with the length of this and get like vastly different results. Yeah. Gordon, wow, but, that's amazing. Uh, so if anyone has any Aaron, questions. What are you calling these again? What did I name your design for you? Yes. <laughs> My well, idea was. I tried to call them the wall sconce earrings. <laughs> and I said, um, uh, maybe not. Because <laughs> <laughs> they remind uh, me of like uh, um, vintage and antique wall sconces. Um, <laughs> I'll put it on. Someone, I saw someone call them like wishbone style, but I, I named it the hammer drop earrings. So that's what eventually they'll be on. Like in a few days, I'll put it on YouTube and you can find it named that way. Um, while we have everyone here, I'm just going to plug the upcoming classes. Can you see this? Yes. Oh, you're, you're, you're modeling them. Well, Cyrus said to put it on. I thought I'll you were talking to someone. <laughs> no, I took my AirPod out. No, nobody's here. Well, if he is here, he knows better than to come in right now. I close the door, so. But, um, yes, I did. So yeah, I did use a little punch to make the holes. Um, also, we discussed uh, another good idea for that before, instead of hammering the, let me recenter this. Instead of hammering the ends, if you uh, just looped them up and made little loops out of them, um, then you could just hang this right from there and that would be perfect as well. I think that would be really fun to see. So if anybody does that, yeah, absolutely show us. Um, if you make the design, post it in the gem chat because I would love to see it. Um, Sam, you were link. saying we're, we're going to talk about the upcoming design? Yeah, I just want people to know we already have two more classes posted on the site. So um, I lost the bracelet. It's somewhere around here, but I have the earrings for next week right here. So, so we we're, were calling, calling these the holiday party earrings, and I use the um, Art Deco cut. Um, what stone is this again? Diopside? Yeah. And then, um, oh, you can see that really well. I think this mirror lighting thing is working well. I haven't had to move my light at all. Um, and then the, the itty bitty beads are um, rubies, jade, and pyrite. And then we hammer in this class as well, but you don't have to have a whole punch. <laughs> 
and the uh this is pyrite as well but you can mm -hmm. use whatever um accents you want and we have a supply list on the website we have a shiny new website to help you sign up for the classes um and you get reminders in your email i'll put another i'll put the link once more um to the class page this is a good page to bookmark because that's where we have up upcoming classes to re to rsvp register for to get a reminder and then um we also have all of the past classes posted there also so it's like if you want to if you're into wanting to get inspired like that's a great page to say to save um and as Rachel was saying i put a link to the gem chat so we can see share your projects once you make it because like it's so fun yes i love to see when the um when you guys make the projects and i tell my boyfriend about them <laughs> like so many of my thoughts are i know it's so fun it's like the best part is when when people post what they make he, he asks um, me about the lives all the time like after i'm done with them he's like what's your live and then Ooh, so i was gonna see. make them with the smoky fourth art deco Ooh, i i was gonna make mine with the um the the ones for the class next week i'm gonna make it with the garnet ones i love the garnets i love like the the natural inclusions in them i think it's fun yeah i can't I, oh that's what you're gonna use that's what you're gonna use next week yeah oh you can't really see that can you but i think they're really fun i think they're like really rustic yeah those are those are gorgeous um michelle i'm not gonna do a a, a preview today for the release I'm trying to see if we could just, I want to, we're trying out just leaving it, focusing more on just the project, but I will post, let's see, I don't think I've posted a preview photo in the group yet of tomorrow's new items. So I'll be sure to post that. And here's a link to the group for those that are new to the stream. Um, I post new beads every Sunday in my group um, and, and Rachel, or usually it's Rachel, we're gonna have a new Aww. Lynn teaching soon um we do a class every saturday <clears throat> as well so weekends are busy at sam's beach shop marauder um, has decided to sleep on my gryffindor cloak and it is now fresh from dry cleaning full of cat hair he's a, he's so beautiful he's a baby. He's a baby. he seems less mad now he's not the mad one oliver is the mad one Alrighty. He's a baby. Um, awesome. We can't wait for you to make them, Leonora. Oh, did I say it? Let me know if I said that right also. Leonora, uh, it looks like. Leonora, thank you. That sounds more right. <laughs> <laughs> um, Alrighty, shall we end it there, Rachel? Yeah. Happy Halloween, everyone. Thanks for joining us. Post um, pictures if you make the earrings. I would love to see them. I'd love to see, especially if you um test out different lengths of the beads then i don't have to test them all out myself um so i would love to see uh what they all look like i'd love to see any variations you come up with you do the loops instead of the holes um so excited this is a, this is a design that has so much room for um variation i feel like totally like yeah i feel like there's endless possibilities with this and even just how you shape the wire at the top, like there's the end, mm -hmm. endless. Um, and I love Lori's idea to have multiple strands of beads. I think it's so fun. That would be cool. Cool. Alrighty, happy Halloween, Rachel. Happy Halloween. And happy Halloween to everyone. Thank you for joining us.